In this video, I'll show you how to use GarageBand's built-in effects and third-party AUV3 apps in your projects. GarageBand for iOS comes with 10 stock effects. I'll go over how to access and add them to a track first of all here. If you're more interested in using AUV3 apps with your projects, you can use the timestamps below to skip ahead if you want. All right, you can add GarageBand's stock effects to any kind of track you want, though how many you can add will vary by track type. I can add up to four in this audio recorder track, whereas in this guitar amp track, I can only add one. GarageBand's stock compressor and visual EQ will always be present and cannot be removed regardless of track type, as they're tied to the sliders found in the track settings menu here. To get started, select the track you want to add an effect to, then hit the track settings button. In the sidebar that appears, tap on plugins and EQ. In the plugins and EQ menu, then tap on edit. If you have a patch or a preset applied to your track, it may have some effects already loaded into it. You can remove any of these by tapping on the red minus button next to the effects name. To add an effect, tap on a green plus icon. In this menu, there are two tabs, Effects and Audio Unit Extensions. We'll get to the Audio Unit Extensions tab later on in this video. The Effects tab is where you'll find all of GarageBand's stock effects. All of them are pretty self-explanatory, really. Chorus applies a chorus effect. Microphaser applies a phaser effect. And track reverb, surprise, surprise, applies a reverb effect. All of these stock effects have controls that you can access or hide by tapping the chevron next to the effects name in the list here. There are two types of AUV3 apps that you can use with GarageBand, instrument apps and effect apps. Some examples of audio unit instrument apps would be synths like AudioKit's King of FM, Bleece's Alpha Synth or Moog's Model D. To add an AUV3 instrument to your GarageBand project, create a new track if needed, head to the sound browser, make your way to the external section and tap on audio unit extensions. Here you'll find a list of AUV3 compatible instruments that you have installed on your iDevice. If I pick Clevgren's excellent Spell Dosa instrument app here, you'll see it load up in GarageBand, with GarageBand's on-screen keyboard below Spell Dosa's interface. I can interact with it the same way I would if it were in standalone mode, And when I'm ready to record, I do it the same way I would any regular GarageBand native instrument. The other type of AUV3 apps are effect apps. Examples would be Aurora DSP's Goblin Guitar Synth, Baby Audio's Super VHS, or Audio Modern's Panflow. Like GarageBand stock effects, you'll be adding these AUV3 effects to an existing track. So in GarageBand's track view, select the track you want to apply the AUV3 effect to, tap the track settings button, and tap on plugins and EQ. Next, tap on edit, and you'll see the empty available plugin slots appear. Tap a green plus icon, and you'll see a list of GarageBand's built-in effects once again. This time though, you want to tap on the Audio Unit Extensions tab. And then from the list of AUV3 apps you have installed, select the audio unit you want to add to your track. I'll add Baby Audio Super VHS Effect, and if I click on it in the plugin list, you'll see its interface appear. From here, I can adjust it with all of its settings and parameters.
Let me know what AUV3 apps you use most in your garage band projects down in the comments. And if you could give that like button a good hard slap on your way past, I'd really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And now that you know how to use third party apps and effects in your garage band projects, watch this next where I share some of my absolute favourite freebies.